Good morning, or depending on when you're watching this, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. My name's Ross, and as always told, out of voice of radio, so today we need to look at a couple of new artwork rares, a couple of new secret rares, a couple of stunning new cards that have gone and been revealed for, well, they've been revealed for Raging Surf. Which we know is going to be Paradox Rift over here. Now, these have actually been as good as confirmed for Paradox Rift. And the reason is really simple. We know that Paradox Rift is going to be made up of three Japanese sets. There is Raging Surf, which is currently being revealed in Japan. And then there is a double set, which has not actually been revealed in Japan, but we know from listings, etc. that it's coming. That means there should be 36 artwork rares in Paradox Rift, 12 from each of the three Japanese sets. We know for a fact it has been officially announced that there are going to be 34, and we know that Scream, Tail, and Iron Bundle are going to be in the Elite Trainer Box. Annoyingly, the Elite Trainer Box, they've shown it with the cards hidden, but yeah. So we know there's 36 from those three sets in Japan. We know that the two missing are going to be in the Elite Trader boxes. So it would be a gigantic surprise if these cards weren't in Paradox Rift. I suppose if I'm being fair, I cannot actually say they're confirmed. But they are at this point as good as confirmed. And this is awesome. And let's start off with Groudon. Look at Groudon, ladies and gentlemen. I mean, goodness me. I mean, these artwork rares, right? They've been stunning since the beginning, don't get me wrong. But wow. And here's the thing, right? I've got my favorite artist, my Hayagunasuke, my Okacheke, and then there's people like Kuramitsu and Yukimori, and, you know, some others who I just have massive soft spots for. And this isn't any of those. And yet, yeah, it's absolutely amazing. Also, I'm sure other people are going to make this reference, but I've not seen them do it yet. So let me be the first as far as I'm aware. Groudon's totally got the high ground. <laughs> so yeah, absolutely stunning card with the Groudon. Now, this is actually the Groudon that we saw before. The regular Groudon was revealed a couple of weeks ago at this stage. And what we've got is single energy. Search your deck for a... No, sorry. I'm being silly here. You may attach a basic fighting energy from your hand to one of your Pokemon. And it is one of your Pokemon. It does not specifically say bench Pokemon. So yes, you could use this to attach to Groudon. Although, like I've told you before, do be careful with those kind of attacks. Because if you attach to yourself, but then immediately get KO'd, you've kind of wasted that attachment. So... Just be a little bit careful. If you're going to do that, try and make sure you're at least going to stay around for a turn before you do. We've then got free energy, and you may discard up to four energy from your Pokemon, any Pokemon, Groudon or otherwise, and this attack does 60 damage for each one you discard. Which, again, sounds pretty gosh darn good, honestly. Although it is a bit expensive. I'll be, I'll be honest with you, it is quite expensive. It's, um, yeah, it's, it's not the cheapest one here. But if you discard four energy from your Pokemon, that's 240 damage. 240 damage is an awful lot. And you can kind of play that game where you discard one or two from Groudon because you think you're then going to be able to use the attack the following turn. But you're not losing too much energy if your opponent surprises and KOs you beforehand. It's, um, yeah, I, I still worry it's a little bit too expensive. But, oh, I like this, ladies and gentlemen. I like this a lot. Now, the other artwork rare that has gone and been revealed here is a rather lovely little Snorunt. And I kind of love this. The, the card designers and the game design team have basically realized lately we don't just have to go for the most evolved Pokemon if we're going to go and give them the artwork rare, we can basically just go anywhere from the evolution line. So, I mean, if we take Obsidian Flames as an example, that's the most recent set. You've got ones like the Pidgeotto line, where they just go full evolution line here. All three of them get an artwork rare, that's kind of lovely. And then you've got ones like, for instance, you know, your Sizzle, your Ninetales, where they have gone for the fully evolved. But then you get random ones like Lechonk and Lavatar, 
where they blatantly could have gone for the more evolved Pokemon, but they were like, nah, mate, we're good. And admittedly, the Larvitar evolved into Tyranitar, who did have an EX in the set, but they could have gone for the Pubertar if they wanted, but now nah, they're like Larvitar. Let's just go for Larvitar. That seems to make sense to me. And I just really like the way they're doing this. I love that they're just messing around with which ones end up getting the artwork rares. Keeps us on our toes. Now, we do need to address the fact, of course, that if there is a Snorunt, there may be either a Glalie or a Frostlass. Remember, you've got the same Pokemon here that does evolve into two different ones. And maybe there's going to be a Glalie. I cannot tell you one way or t'other. But I can tell you there is going to be a Frostlass. Because Frostlass EX has previously gone and been revealed. Although it is a Terra EX. Which means that it is coming through as a Grass type. And to be fair, the Frostlass is really good if you feel confident about flipping heads. Because it's got a stunning ability which says, if this Pokemon is active and is knocked out now what is very important it just says if this pokemon is active and knocked out it does not say buy damage from an attack so an ability damage counters automatic ko whatever it is any ko if it's in the active you flip a coin and if heads your opponent takes one fewer prize uh the attack is two energy 140 and 20 to one of your opponent's pokemon it's fine but it's, um, yeah, it is as it is. But I really, really like this. This is very, very cool if it works. But now we got a Snorunt as well. And I have had the regular art on the screen. We've seen that one before. We haven't actually said what that one does yet, though. So let me do that for you now. I haven't actually checked this translation, but I feel pretty good about it. It is single energy, 10 damage. And if your opponent's active Pokemon is a fighting Pokemon... It does 30 more damage. And look, 40 for a single energy on a basic Pokemon is really good. But it's kind of weird. Most fighting Pokemon aren't weak to water. So, and to be fair, most Pokemon aren't fighting. So it does seem a little bit weird here that we would have such a specific attack. Now, I do need to mention, because this is a fun little side note. This is not the first time an Ice Pokemon has done this. Shout out to the lovely Primal Lugia who reminded me about this one. We did have a Snova back in Ultra Prism that did actually have basically this attack. It wasn't exactly the same. It was, if they're a fighting Pokemon, you do 40 more damage. Which meant that you actually did a total of 60 rather than the 10 plus 30 to put you up to 40. And fun little side note, this is one of the ones in Forbidden Light a little bit later. We got the same card, but as a grass Pokemon. They did that in the Sun and Moon era where they literally took the exact card and just changed its typing, energy cost and weakness and turned it into its other type because Nova is part ice, part grass. So it's weird they did that. And it's weird that we got this kind of attack again. Let, let's not pretend this is some kind of like stunning, brilliant, game-breaking attack or anything silly like that. But it's kind of nice. It's nice that we've got this one coming in. It's, it's nice to have another little Pokemon. So we got these two artwork rares and they are just absolutely brilliant. They're absolutely stunning. And there are a lot more that are going to be coming in the not-too-distant future. But while we're here, I do just very quickly want to mention Feeble because we've not had a chance to talk about Feeble yet and I feel bad about it. So let's mention it here nice and quickly. So we've got a stage 110 HP and we've got the ability which the lovely Antoine Boulet has translated as Sneaky Snatch. Once during your turn, when you play this card from your hand to evolve one of your Pokemon, you may look at your opponent's hand, choose two energy cards you find there, any energy basic or special. And have your opponent shuffle them back into their deck. I like it. I like it quite a bit. But it's one of those awkward ones. Like there's going to be times where you use this. Grab a couple of energy and then kind of like sit there chuckling. Because you got one over on your opponent. And that's brilliant. And there's going to be plenty of other times where you evolve into it. And your opponent's like, ha, sight gutted. I don't have any energy. And then you've just kind of wasted the ability. And the attack is garbage. It's 2 energy 60. Nobody cares about that. And the fact of the matter is, we're talking about a stage 1 that doesn't evolve any further. So, um, yeah. 
If you're using this, you're using it purely on the ability, and that's all we've got here. And the ability's not always going to fire. So look, if you've got reason to believe that your opponent has energy in their hand that they're going to need, then this is actually a really nice ability that I like very much indeed. I'm just not sure how often it's actually going to work. As a fun little side note, remember there are two other Feeble that we've got in the format at the moment as well. We've got the one from Evolving Skies, which makes both players shuffle their hand and put them on the bottom of their deck and draw four cards. And we've got the one that came around in Astral Radiance, that if your opponent has two or fewer prize cards remaining, whenever they play a supporter card from their hand, prevent all effects of that card done to your bench Pokemon V. So look, if you want to play Feeble, we've now got three different interesting Feeble. So even if you don't want to use this particular ability, you can play like one of each of the three. And then some games, this one will work really nicely. And then some games, one from Evolving Skies is going to be a nice little bit of disruption. And then maybe you're playing a Pokemon V deck, so the one from Astral Radiance can come in sometimes as well. Sometimes it's nice. If you've got a real fringe card like Feeble that may or may not end up being good, sometimes it's actually really nice to be able to essentially combine it with a couple of other cards of the same Pokemon to give yourself that choice. Uh, let's give it between three and four Wossies. We don't give half Wossies. That would be barbaric. So there we go, ladies and gentlemen. A couple of new artwork rares and a lovely new Feeble as a nice little bonus. But now it's over to you guys. Tell me what you think about these cards. Tell me anything you want to tell me in the comment section. Go nuts. Be nice. And then make sure you like this video. Subscribe to this channel. Follow me on Twitter at the Wasi. That's where we talk about Pokemon and card games and Pokemon card games. All kinds of fun things. And please do consider checking out patreon.com slash ptcgradio, where you can support the channel, get some bonus podcasts, join a Discord, and all kinds of fun things. And get shoutouts on the channel like the lovely Dark1313, who's been a support of ours for, I think, over a year now, and is a very lovely person. So shout out to them for the support and the loveliness. But by far the most important thing as always, look after yourselves till next time, would ya? Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross, and you've been watching PTCG Radio.